I will give this a little try. I'm sorry we're not doing this lecture in person because you are going to get to build all sorts of molecules. But before we go there, um, I hope you did assignment three and four. And one thing you were supposed to do is look through your notes and figure out how many covalent bonds each of these elements needed to be happy stable. So hopefully you figured out hydrogen's stable with one covalent bond, oxygen two, nitrogen three, and carbon four. Or as I like to remember it as honk one, two, three, four. All right, you need to memorize this for the rest of the course. Honk one, two, three, four. Because when we build these big molecules, you need to know how many covalent bonds everybody needs to be stable. So what we're going to do now is fill out this chart together. And I'm sorry that you can't actually build these little molecules yourself. So the first is H2O. I'm betting you know the name of this. Yeah, water. We've talked about this lots and lots of time. So you know that's oxygen, two hydrogen. So go ahead and draw it, OK? You can draw one circle for oxygen and two for hydrogen. And you should know that's a polar covalent bond. So for the name, obviously, I want you to put water. And for the structure, I want you to draw this. All right, I'll help you out a little bit here. For the name, I'll just type in water. See, that's not too hard. You draw this for the structure. And you know what? We've spent two lectures and a chapter on water, so I'll let you write down a fun fact about water. Your choice. All right. Next, we're going to O2, which I'm sure, I hope you know, by oxygen, is oxygen. So oxygen is something you're supposed to draw out for one of your um, homework assignments. So one molecule of oxygen consists of two atoms of oxygen, and they're united by, remember what this is, a double covalent bond. And we also remember a double covalent bond is stronger than a single covalent bond. So one molecule of oxygen has two atoms of oxygen connected by a double covalent bond. Now, one question you were supposed to answer is, is this the oxygen we need to breathe to live? And the answer is yes. This is what we need to breathe to live. In fact, all animals need to breathe oxygen to live. All, in fact, all complex um, organisms need oxygen to live. And I sort of give you an extra credit assignment, which some of you tried to ask people why we need oxygen to live. Everybody knows we die if we don't have oxygen. Well, here is why we need oxygen to live in a language a fourth grader can understand. We need oxygen in order to get the energy out of our food. That's it. We need oxygen to unlock the stored or chemical energy from our food. So yeah, a fourth grader can understand we need oxygen to get energy out of our food. You should be able to understand we need oxygen gas to unlock the stored chemical potential energy from our food. And we're going to talk a lot about that, this process called cellular respiration. All right, starting next week and throughout the course. But yes, O2 is what we need to breathe all animals need to breathe to live. All right, so one question I asked you is, can fish though? Can fish breathe water to live? We can't breathe water to live, right? You'd breathe in nothing but water, you'd round, all right? Can fish breathe um, water to live? Well, the answer is no, fish do not breathe water. Fish are animals, they breathe oxygen just like we do. So what do fish breathe? They breathe oxygen that's dissolved in water. And why can they breathe dissolved oxygen and we can't? Because they have gills, all right? So I have a guest visitor to help us illustrate this. So let's see if I can manipulate these cameras. Oh, no. 